Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and it is Tag Tuesday, so I am here with a tag and I am doing the Counting the Days tag. Let me pull this up here one second. <laughs> this tag was created by Ruben at Two Readers It May Concern and Emily at Prose and Petticoats. And I was tagged by Ellen and Ellen Made Book Club and this is a fun tag and I am looking forward to doing it. Um, it gave me a chance to go and look at my TBR shelf and think about some books that I want to read in the relatively somewhat near future. Um, but I do have a couple books I don't have physical copies of for whatever reason. So we'll, you know, do that. So let me pull up here, make sure I have this right. Okay. <laughs> the first one is there's eight prompts plus tag people. So, um, and the first one is, what is a book that excites you because of the co of its cover? So this book was one I was going to get from the library, but it's for my uh, one of my book clubs. And I just realized I'm not going to get it in time. So I just ordered it. I had to order it because I'm not going to get it in time otherwise. But that's okay because the cover is absolutely gorgeous. And it's Malas by Marcela Fuentes. Um, this is a relatively new, um, I have the for page up here. It was released in June. Um, it's historical fiction. It's set on the te Texas-Mexico border. It is not translated, I believe, but um, it is an own voices book. Um, I will read a little bit of what's going on here. Um, in 1951, a mysterious old woman confronts Pilar Aguirre in the small border town of La Cien Cienega, Texas. The old woman is sure Pilar stole her husband and, in a heated outburst, lays a curse on Pilar and her family. More than 40 years later, Lulu Munoz is dodging chaos at every turn. Her troubled, fa her troubled father's moods, his rules, her secret life as a singer in a punk band, but most of all, her upcoming quinceanera. When her beloved grandmother passes away, Lulu finds herself drawn to the glamorous stranger who crashed the funeral and who lives alone on the shunned edge of town. So, that is interesting. Is that... It is coming of age. It does not look like it is YA. It kind of wondered there. It kind of sounded a little bit like YA, but it's not. But that that is a beautiful cover. So I am looking forward to it. And I will soon have it in my hot little hands. The second one uh, that I have is a book that I'm excited because of its author. And uh, this one is one that I am going to use a Libro credit for as soon as I get my next one on the 1st of, first of October. And that is Lovely One, a memoir by Katanji Brown Jackson. So if you don't know who Katanji Brown Jackson is, um, she is the newest member of the US Supreme Court. She was appointed by Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. And uh, she is also the first African-American woman to serve on the Supreme Court. She is also, by the metrics that they use, like there's different, she's the most qualified person to serve on the Supreme Court. And when I say that, that's because there's certain areas of law, of being a judge, that one can serve in, in their career. And you can look up these little tables where they list all the, the just the justices and which ones they've done. She's the only one that has a check mark in every single box. She's very accomplished. Um, and I wanna know more about her. One of my favorite memoirs of all time is My Beloved World by Sonia Sotomayor, who also, she's she is the most senior um, justice on the progressive side, which is the side that Katanji Brown Jackson is on. And um, that came out just like this shortly after she was appointed. Um, so I am really looking forward to learning more about Katanji Brown Jackson. I have heard interview interviews with her about this book. And I'm just, I'm very, very interested because it is a memoir. I am choosing to do this on audio, at least at first. If I really like it, I might get a print copy for my shelves. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to this one because I want to know more about KJB. KBJ, KBJ. I'm still using saying RGB, but it's KBJ. And don't tell me that other person with three names on the Supreme Court gets initials because she doesn't. She has another nickname, but we're going to stick with KBJ for this one. Okay, now we're getting to ones I actually have. What is a book that excites me because of my, uh, excites me because of the premise? And this is one I've shown recently. This is Rednecks by Taylor Brown. Um, so I recently got this book. It was part of the uh, the IPL, the Indie Press List for the currently reading podcast, Their Bookish Friends. Um, and I got this from the Book Tenders bookstore in West Virginia. It is an Appalachian novel about the West Virginia mine wars of 1920 that I know next to nothing about. I know slightly more about it now than I did when I ordered this book, only because stuff we must, missed in history class did an episode on it. But, 
soon. Um, I'm really interested in this because I love, learn I like so much historical fiction and I read a lot of historical fiction, but so much historical fiction is like World War II, the Civil War. I like it when they take these smaller things and really explore them. So, um, cause I feel like I learn a lot that way. So I'm really looking forward, not just to the story. And I've heard that this is a good book. This is a highly rated book. So not just because it's a novel, but because I, I'm expecting to learn new things in this book. So there you go. Option three. <laughs> no, no, that was three. This was three, four. Um, because of its style, what excites me because of its style. This one probably is not a surprise if you know me. Um, my favorite book of all time is of course Mink River by Brian Doyle. And just last month I read the follow-up to that called the Plover, which I expected to like but not love, but I ended up loving by Brian Doyle. So I have another Brian Doyle book. And this one's not set in Oregon. This one is Chicago. So not sure where it's set. <laughs> no, it's, it's set in Chicago. It's Chicago, but I love Brian Doyle's like his worldview and this sort of some people call it magical realism. I don't. I just think it's his worldview and I love it so much. Um so with both Mink River, Mink River definitely, and a little bit of a lesser extent to the Plover. There's a lot of local stuff there for me. So I'm really interested to see what he's like when he's not writing about Oregon. I could have pulled another book of his off my shelf uh, that is set in Oregon, but I thought, no, I'm gonna try something different with him. So I am I think this is going to be my next Brian Doyle book because I just love his, his writing style and his worldview and yeah. And I'm very sad that I can become a completist of his because he has passed on, but but, but I'm not prepared here. That's all his, there's a lot of stuff there for me to read. So I can go for quite a while with this one. Okay, question number, that was four. Number five, what excites me because of its influence? So I have a book here that people tell me all the time I have to read and I said, I am going to read it. Don't worry, I am going to read it. I'm just not gonna read it right now. <laughs> And that is because I have this thing with super hyped books where if I get them a kind of like when the hype's already going, I like, I feel like it's put up to an unrealistic expectation. I think this book probably would be fine against that, but I'm not risking it. So the book came out a while ago and I thought, oh yeah, this is a good time. But then it came out in paperback. So it's all coming up again. Mine is in paperback because I got it from the UK from Blackwells. That is of course, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingslover. Yes, I'm going to read this book in 2025. So I'm excited by it. It just is going to wait a little bit longer. But if you don't know, if you've like never heard of books or Booktube before, and this is like you just happened upon this, this is Barbara Kingsolver, Kingsolver's retelling, I guess, of Dickens' David Copperfield, but it is set in Appalachia. This is my second Appalachia book. I should probably also reiterate my Appalachia thing. I think it's important because in the news there is someone who has that someone in the news who I, you know, there's lots of names for him. Uh, he um, wrote a book that really misrepresented and throwed Appalachia under the bus. So I kind of feel like doing due diligence and doing more accurate descriptions of, of Appalachia, which is, I mean, Rednecks is gonna come first, but just less Brian Doyle, sorry. So yes, the influence, there's a lot of influence. It also was a co-winner of the Pulitzer Prize in 20, um, would you say 2023, I guess? I'm not sure the, not how the years work. It's not the most recent one. The one before this, this tied with Trust by Hernan Diaz, which I also have, but is not here. All right, prompt six. What is a book that excites you because of its emotional weight? This is a book that's been on my shelf that I wasn't even sure I was going to read because of the emotional value of it. I'm still a little worried that it might be too much, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. I'm not sure when, but in the near future. And that is All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. I think S.A. Cosby is a fantastic writer. And, you know, Razor Blade Tears wrecked me. This one does deal, let's just, uh, there's a, it's a school shooting, but it's more like a student, you know, it's a student shoots a teacher, but it's still considered a school shooting. As a parent with kids in school, that's hard. And that's why I've been very reluctant to read this, but I just, I look at it on my shelf and I'm like, I do think I should read this book. So, um, 
definitely, I know it's gonna be an emotional book. Razor really tears, made me cry ugly tears. Um, just, I'm working my way up to this. And also, for those of you, I will say about S.A. Cosby, he is very violent. Um, I'm okay with that. I mean, he's he's within my comfort zone, just barely, but he is. But if you want to try S.A. Cosby and you, for whatever reason, aren't sure about his novels, he's actually a fantastic short story writer. Um, and you can find his short stories fairly easily. Um, look them up. They're great because they're short. He doesn't get as graphic with the violence or anything like that. And he's a really tight writer anyway, novels or short story. But I think short stories give you a really good taste of his writing. Um, he is also editing the, the 2024 Best American Mystery and Suspense. So I already have that on pre-order. So I don't know if he's going to have a story in it. He did have one in the 2023. So there's one you can look for. He has a story in the 2023 Best American Mystery and Suspense short stories. Um, but yeah, you can easily find some of his short stories if you're nervous about his, his writing, but you want to try him anyway. That's a good way to go. All right. Question number seven, uh, what's a book that excites you because of its sense of humor? And um, I don't read a lot of comedy, but uh, I have a couple series that I like that are that have, I like the author's sense of humor. And this is the one that I ordered and I need to get to it. Um, I just need to find a hole. In fact, I'm not even gonna put this one back upstairs on that TBR shelf. I'm gonna put this on my immediate TBR shelf. And this is The Queen of Poisons by Robert Thorogood. This is number three in the Marlowe Murder Club series. I love the series. I think it's delightful. There is a lot of humor in the series. I just haven't found the hole in my reading schedule yet for this one. So yeah. Um, but this follows, so Marlowe is like your little English country town. And in Marlowe, there are three, there, there are many women in Marlowe, but we're going to focus on three of them. <laughs> and there are women who are sort of a little bit invisible to society. One is an older woman. She's like in her late seventies. There's like a middle-aged woman who's a dog walker. She's not, she's very normal looking. She's, you know, people just kind of miss her. And one is the vicar's wife and they've kind of come together and they form this little, you read the first book, you see how they come together. It's delightful. Um, but yeah, so Marlow Murder Club. Uh, if you are a fan of like British crime TV shows and you watch Death in Paradise, this is the guy who created Death in Paradise. So there you go. And now finally, I'm going to go back to ones that I don't have physical copies of, although I do own a copy of this one. It's just on my Kobo in my, there we go. Um, and this is uh, what is a book that excites you because of its challenge or difficulty? And this one I'm going to say is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I've heard really good things about this book. Um, and I'm trying to get back into reading more Victorian literature. Um, you know, I'm a huge Bronte fan. Stay tuned until March. Um, and I recently read Shirley by, reread Shirley. I'd read it before. Reread Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, which is compared a lot to North and South. And I don't think it's compared favorably. <laughs> Not my favorite Bronte novel. That's okay. Um, but I've heard so much about North and South um, and the premise and the writing. And the, I, I want to give this one a try. It is very large according to, well, according to Goodreads, the Penguin copy is 496 pages. That probably means there's probably about 400 pages of text. It's probably not that large, but the print might be really small, which is why I have it on Kobo, because I have learned I read my classics electronically, because <laughs> they're small print. Um, so yeah, um, this is probably going to be a 2025 book for me. Um, I might, I might, I don't know if I'm going to do this in, I'm not going to do it Victober this year, but I think if I don't do it, during Big Book Summer next year, I will do it October of next year. The only reason why I'm not doing it this year is because as I, I just filmed my wrap up video, which you would have seen by this point if you watch all my videos. Um, I feel a little overcommitted for September. So I don't wanna take on a huge book like this in October of this year. But as I said, it'll be read next year. It might be my October book for next year. We'll see, I don't know. Anyway, that is the one that, oops, I just kind of moved my thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> that is the one. And now it's time to tag some people. I got my little, my sticks here and I'm going to go over here so I can see who Ellen tagged. Now I know that Suey just did this. Um, and I don't think I have, I don't think I have any of the people she tagged because most of them were new to me. So now I am followers of you guys. If you were tagged by Suey in this tag, then I now follow you. <laughs> But I am going 
gonna check and make sure that I'm gonna make sure that um, Ellen didn't tag him. And I always tag two people on tags that I don't create. So the first one is Aaron at Aaron Go Live. Okay, number two. Angelia at Read and Reread. So I haven't put, had to put one back. Let's see here. <laughs> and of course, the one person for whom I started this whole system because I was always tagging her, Sue Jackson. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I started doing this so I wouldn't be tagging Sue in every text. For some reason, I just would. And like the majority of the time when I pull sticks, Sue comes up. But anyway, I tagged her again. The three of you, tag, you're it. And uh, you don't have to do this. It's just an invitation. And if you saw this and I didn't tag you, um, just pull of the draw. Go ahead. Feel free and do it. Tag me so I can see that you did do it because I want to be sure to see your video. And there we go. Like, subscribe, uh, join my Discord. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.